you know, version 1.1 works quite fine. I can bring the camera out all the way. I can get any kind of view. I can get it, you know, relatively speaking, I can adjust it for a, a nice low shot. Um, I can bring it up high. I can do a top down, you know. Um, I could even put it over the 3D printer if I wanted. Hey YouTube. Normally, I'd be working on a project on the bench, and you'd be looking top-down or from the back at whatever's going on on the workbench. And while normally my projects are on the bench, this project is actually about the bench. Um, for the last half a year, I've played around with this uh, microphone boom arm setup with a couple of small, lightweight um, SDI CCTV cameras. And they've served me pretty well. They're manual focus, and they have a pretty deep depth of field, so they hold focus reasonably well for the fact that they're 100 bucks and provide a you know, 1920 by 1080 p signal. Um, but what I've been finding is that large projects won't fit on the bench. Um, you'll remember that some of these videos about the lithium titanium oxide battery bank barely fit on the bench itself. And what I've been really wishing is that I could have the camera over where it is right now. What I'd like to do is install something on this uh, workbench surface that actually permits me to relocate that camera arm from back there over to here. And I'd also like to install some BNC bulkhead connectors somewhere in this neighborhood along with a DC socket um, for 12 volt power for these cameras so that I can just move the camera arm from behind to in front and reconfigure the entire um, camera space. Sometimes I just want a really wide shot so if I can get the camera arm mounted on this uh, desk pulled out of it then said camera can look at the bench from a distance. Great in theory but a couple problems. How are we going to get something mounted onto what is a cheap IKEA Linmon desk. There are other videos that are teardowns which show the Linmon desk in all its um, cheap glory. Uh, for better or for worse, this Linmon desk has served well as a workbench, if only because there's a large organization cabinet under here um, holding it up. If it wasn't for that, this would slowly sag. Um, nevertheless, there's not a whole lot of meat on here, so I've uh, come up with a 3D printed mount, which um, once I put the heat press inserts in, I should be able to sandwich this from both sides, and I might have to print additional um, flanges for the top and bottom that are bigger. 35 millimeters um, seemed big at the time, but it doesn't give a huge amount of meat. Uh, regardless, design this up real quick and use a 25 millimeter um, hole, bit, hole drilling bit to bore a hole through the bench surface. Pop these in with a flange on the top and bottom using countersunk M3 screws and uh, see if it's load bearing or not. Not a whole lot of action happens around this area of the bench other than just merely a spot for junk to collect like right now. All right, so some of these prints are pretty rough. There's support material in these holes, but like a lot of my projects, I've designed it to use these um, ISB M3 uh, heat set inserts. So the trick to doing heat set inserts is to have a flat metal surface to press these against after you heat set them. Otherwise, the insert may go in askew. Um, in, in general, you want to avoid having the insert be out of square with the surface that you're trying to do the insert into. Yep, all right, here we go. All three are in on both sides.
Ah, uh, that's the good fit I'm looking for. Now what we need to do is decide where we want to put it on here um, and prepare to mount with some countersink screws. Let's do a bit of cleanup first. There's a small cone on the inside and I'll maybe overlay some uh, footage of Fusion 360 here that means that the uh, bearing point inside lifts the um, the tube that's the actual stem that goes in here off of the bottom to reduce the friction. So, moment of truth, that actually feels pretty good. But there's a heck of a lot of force involved in that and I honestly wonder whether I can make it work. I just want to understand how far this is going to reach. If I put it all the way here, I can still get the camera a good foot and a half away from the bench. So anywhere over here is reasonable territory. If I put it here, um, I can get the camera even further out. Um, but again, it's a question of whether the table can withstand the forces. Linmon tables have wood blocks in the corners and then nothing for the most part over here. So if I put it here, I run the risk of just breaking the material of the desk. If I put it over here, there's a little bit more meat to bite into and hopefully I can make it work. At this stage, you may also be asking yourself, why don't you just take the clamp from that side and move it to this side? Two reasons. One, the clamp protrudes and it can shift. Reason number two is that if this works, I'd like to make more of these and install a couple more points around the bench so that I can get different camera angles without having to set up this big beefy tripod. So I have to decide. At this point, I'm just going to think fortune favors the bold. At a worst case, what's the worst that happens? Um, I damage this section of the bench and, well, I rotate the whole thing 180 degrees and the hole ends up underneath some equipment where it's not going to be noticed and not a bother. We're going to open up the cardboard. This is a terrible knife and it is covered in some sort of adhesive or the rubber coating has melted over the years, so I want to use this knife as little as possible. Look at that virgin untouched surface. Alright, so this is um, a tungsten carbide hole saw. You'll see it in the next video, maybe, um, about the battery bank project. I used it to bore a hole in the side of the case. This is my last chance for regret, so, um, screw it. Just, I need to try and make sure I get it square, so this might not be the best view. Alright, so inside we've got honeycomb paper. I'm going to push that out of the way, because I don't want to tear the honeycomb paper, I just want to get it out of the way. And then we're going to go all the way through. Hmm. Slight problem. The uh, girth here is a little wider than the girth here. So I'm going to have to go come in from underside as well. Alright, moment of truth. Let's see how well this kept the edge intact. That is actually very good. A regular hole saw would have just walked all over the place and torn it all up. Well, I didn't need that cardboard anyway, right? Um, this is upside down, but let's just see how that fits. That fits beautifully, so let's just try it from the other side. We're going to just lift this into position. Alright, so I, d I was planning on it being just a little bit um, shy of the surface here. Predominantly so that I could clamp down on this. If I had it exactly flush, then there would be minimal clamping force, and therefore uh, most of the force would go laterally out to the sides instead of to the surface. Um, that's the theory anyway. So let's um, mount the top wherever it went. Alright, let's try this again. You can see that there's that ever so slight gap between the inside uh, core and the top flange. That is so that when I tighten this down, you can start to see it compressed down. I'm going to do this evenly. I'm watching the camera more than what I'm doing with my hands here. That's it's exciting. It's clamping down just how I designed it. 
All right, that's six inch pounds. Six inch pounds, I forgot to do the front one. Oh God, that feels like it might be a little too much force. Okay, moment of truth. It barely fits in the top. Oh, I didn't open up the hole in the top socket. All right, it's in. It holds its weight. Look at that. I can get all the way off the side of the table. Now, <laughs> let's zoom back in here. There is a tremendous amount of wiggle. I think at a minimum, I'm increasing the size of these flanges. Okay, so I've tried out the uh, new mount, and it does still wobble a little bit, so I think that there's going to be some more work on the design. You know, version 1.1 works quite fine. I can bring the camera out all the way, I can get any kind of view, I can get it, you know, relatively speaking, I can adjust it for a, a nice low shot. Um, I can bring it up high, I can do a top down, you know, um, I could even put it over the 3D printer if I wanted. Alright, so I experimented with this a bit more, and when I mounted in the 70mm plate from top and bottom, um, I still found that despite getting some degree of compression, there was still some wobble, and then it struck me what was actually happening. The honeycomb core inside resists compression, but it's not a rigid, solid object. Um, because this slightly compresses under the screw tension from the top and bottom plate, um, there's not enough friction to keep this entire assembly from twisting back and forth. So my solution to that, we're going to try that now, I printed some uh, quick little honeycomb structures that are just big enough to fit in here. I could have done hexagons, but I went with um, pentagons with triangles just to keep it simple um, and to use a little less material. So the idea is that you take <clears throat> this uh, insert and many more like it and stuff them in the perimeter around here. That way when the top and bottom clamp apply force to the top and bottom pieces of fiberboard, they actually compress on here and increase the static friction between the top and bottom plates and the surface of the fiberboard. So we're going to try that now. Yeah, so I've got five of these little inserts. More on this side than on this side, but that's where the compression is going to be. So if I apply a clamp here, we shouldn't see much compression. Yeah, that's actually a lot better. Alright, so I've installed this into place, and it does appear to work much better. There is dramatically less lateral movement. There's still a little bit. Um, I could probably go tighter on the screws. It looks like there might be a little bit of deformation um, in this top plate where it's starting to bow out. Um, but there's, there's only so much deflection that can occur before the plastic fights back. Either way, it's enough. Like, when when you move this camera arm around all the way at its maximum extent of freedom and range, there's very little to no movement in this plate relative to the surface of the table, uh, which is good. And, I mean, up until now, I think people have had difficulties modifying these cheap IKEA Linmon tables without running into this problem. So the insertion of those little 3D printed um, supports inside allows clamping force from the top and bottom to be transferred through the material to the the core and because it's not fiberboard but plastic it actually compresses and resists further compression therefore increasing the static friction. I could probably get more um, stability if I just sanded down the surface, sanded the plastic down or even uh, put in some rubber in between the two surfaces. But I, I don't need to really play around with this more. I think it's just fine as it is. Um, I can get a camera all the way up to the workbench surface. There is a bit of an exclusion zone. Um, so what I might do is actually design another head for this microphone arm so that I can flip this whole arrangement upside down and undersling the camera. But if I'm standing working at the bench, I can get more or less my point of view. 
from from wherever I'm standing. I can even get this to look over top the 3D printer. Um, this is kind of an ideal setup for me. It might vary for anyone else, but uh, potentially you could have multiple sockets to just kind of move this assembly back and forth and really had a flexible filming setup. I could aim this camera at my power supplies. I could aim it at the 3D printer. I could, you know, get a macro shot or an overhead shot. Um, and, and I'd really just have that new newfound freedom and flexibility to set things up. And one view that I've been lacking is the view from where the camera is right now, looking at the bench from a wide angle. So now that I have the ability to move the camera here without tripod legs getting in the way of everything else, um, I'm going to start integrating that into some of the content that I make. Um, I'm going to continue playing around with this design. The center crush core, the support core, um, really did make the difference. And I think that's also why people have had difficulties modifying the Linmon tables in the past. These tables are absolutely engineered to a price and with uh, as renewable materials as they can get, but ultimately that honeycomb paper um, core isn't conducive to clamping from the top and bottom unless you introduce extra support. So designing a support that goes inside that hole that, that you can slide into place around the uh, hole that you've cut to increase the rigidity, that that really fixes the problem. Um, potential variance in the design, I could maybe make a plate that has several holes. So you could actually move this you know, every few inches. You could make a rail along a table. There's all sorts of ideas that come to mind. Um, you could um, have some cable feed throughs as part of a larger plate or arrangement. So there's there's a lot of ideas that I want to experiment with now um, based on this. Ultimately, it's still a Linmon table. It's not going to be the same as a solid wood table. But this is like 99% of what I want. And all I really need to do now is cable, do some cleanup, um, and experiment with the whole setup a little more. So uh, hopefully the next video that you see um, will feature that. One other note. Um, I've been thinking about starting up a Patreon to make files like these available to you, the viewer. Um, if you've stuck around this long, clearly you care about what it is that I do. In 10 years, I've never bothered to monetize this channel. Um, but ultimately, if I'm going to make these things available, maybe I should get at least a little bit something for my time. So let me know down in the comments if you know uh, you'd be willing to support for you know a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars a month, whatever you know price of a cup of coffee. Ultimately, I've put files online before on Thingiverse and just had people directly rip them off and start selling them on eBay. So it makes me extremely hesitant to put my content or work out there for free again, knowing that people will rip it off. Um, ultimately, that's just what's going to happen on the internet, so maybe there should be some degree of acceptance of it. I don't know. It doesn't feel right, but at the same time, if other people want stuff like this, maybe there should be some compensation. Um, let me know what you think down in the comments. Um, otherwise, like, subscribe, comment, click the notification button, because the algorithm rules your life. And uh, other than that, happy holidays, and probably the next video you'll see is working on some, uh, some of my Christmas gifts for other people. Um, I've got that magnetic levitator thing. I'm going to be doing a bunch of uh, PCB Christmas trees. Um, and maybe one or two other objects here and there if they seem interesting enough. So, other than that, peace out.